Hello, Alina from XM8 Mastery here. And today what I'd like to talk about is the new update to X1. So yes, I've had X1 since February. It's now November. So I've had it for quite a while, but I just did the new update in the last week. And now the interface for the, or the user experience for writing a project, writing an estimate has now changed completely as well. So I'm gonna go over some of the changes, not only in the main part of X1, they've actually um, made some tweaks since the last time I've done an X1 video to the actual dashboard area and then we'll take a look at inside an estimate and see all the changes they've done there they're trying to make it look more like the mobile version eventually they say online might migrate over to something that looks like this as well so it's good to be up on this stuff before they make all these big changes so let's go take a look at the new updated version of x1 and what it looks like inside of a project now So here we are in the dashboard under my projects or local in the new X1 system. It looks completely different than your control center dashboard in either desktop 28 or online 28. So this is the newest version, which is X1. Some nice things that they have changed recently that I'm not sure if everyone knows about is you are able to export your whole macro pack. That's something that I really struggled with. I wasn't able to do that for a little bit. I don't know if it was a glitch in my system, but tech support said they couldn't fix it. And then uh, I did an update and then suddenly, voila, I could. So there are some good things that they are trying to help here, um, trying to put some features back in. If you'll notice, there's not an exact analysis screen. So that's one thing that I think they're working on getting back is so that you can send things through exact analysis directly. Um, with the screen. So we'll see what happens with that. I did learn some things like here, there's this upside down pyramid. That's a filter. So we used to be able to filter things by completed or in progress. So that's back here in this uh, filter screen. And this is probably here before. I just didn't know about it. Someone recently went through one of the exact work courses, um, our exact work trainer actually, Todd, went through the exact work uh, mastery course and he was taught that we could filter there. So that's something I wasn't previously aware of, which is awesome. And then we can also, of course, um, click on a project and have all these options that are pretty much all the options from the, the 28 version. There's a couple things missing here. Um, I can't filter by label or bring things up by label, which is uh, an interesting thing. And by label, here's what a label looks like. I can select that and go to edit. And here's these labels. We used to label things with like blue as water loss or um, you know, green means it needs to be worked on the estimate. Red means stop work. We're done. Uh, we used to use these labels for quite a few things over in 28. So apparently these don't show up anywhere meaningful yet, our project screen or anything like that. So I'm still waiting on that. Otherwise, you know, pretty much a lot, most of the functionality is back here uh, in the program. Now I'm going to go into an estimate and you're going to see it's completely different. Look at that. So this does not look um, totally radically different, right? It's like they sliced 28 right here, <laughs> left 28 to the right of my screen and then put X1 on the left of my screen. So, and you can see at the top here, they've taken away the tabs. There's now these, I, I'd still kind of call them tabs. They just don't look like an actual tab anymore. But here they've divvied up things differently as well, meaning in the estimate is now where you're gonna find sketch. So it's no longer a sketch tab than an estimate items tab. They combine the two. So if I click on estimate, there's my sketch and then estimate items for this, as you can see on my screen. One thing that is um, has been bothering me while I've been using this to estimate is there's two scroll bars. So let me throw a macro on here real quick. And you'll see that there'll be um, a, ma a, a scroll bar for my item list and then a scroll bar for my actual window. So it sounds confusing if you, if you can't see it. Uh, here's another glitch, guys. I'm not sure if this is me or if it's the update. I just did an update patch before making this video. But as you can see, I added the macro. It doesn't show up. If I go to another folder and come back to that area, it does show up. Okay, so if you guys are using macros, if you're making changes in a folder, they're not showing up, go out of the folder, come back in, then there it is. Bam. There's my macro added. Okay. So what I mean by the two different areas having to scroll, you've got your right hand side scroll for your line item list. But if I go down to the bottom here, I can't see some of the information that I might need at the top of the screen. I have to actually scroll up. It's not as bad as it was. Maybe they did a fix in the patch, but I was having where the top 
maybe down to here was missing. So like from here upward was missing. I had to scroll up and down. Maybe this new patch that I just downloaded fixed something, but it was hard for me to see the bottom of my item list. It was getting lost because I'd be scrolled up and I can't see the last line item. So maybe they did fix that. You guys, if you're having this double scroll issue, it's still there, but it's not as bad with the new update. So if you're having it where you can't see your bottom line items, go do the update for X1 and hopefully it'll fix it. It looks like it uh, made it a lot less irritating. I hate to be negative, but it was pretty bad when I was trying to write an estimate the other day. The other thing that's happening to me is if I right click, I can copy, but then if I go to another folder and right click, I can't paste. See that? So if you don't know your control uh, or your shortcut keys for Windows, you won't be able to copy and paste anything. It's really hard as well if you're doing, I was doing a siting job, I couldn't copy and paste all my siting from one elevation to the other. So if I control A, which selects all, and if I control C, that will copy, go to the new folder, click in there to select the first line item and control V, my items do come back. They did yesterday. <laughs> Let's try that again. Control A, Control C, click in the new folder, Control V. Interesting. Well, that worked for me yesterday. So they must have done something in this new update to maybe break that again. I'm not sure. I'm just going to copy one line item and let's see if I can Control V it in here. Wow, that is crazy. Okay, so I'm not really sure what, why that's going on. I hopefully, hopefully by the time you guys watch this video, they'll have fixed that. Let me just try adding another folder. I'm curious on to, as to why this isn't working. So let's control A, front elevation. Let's try copy, left elevation, control V, nothing. So yeah, it's very irritating when you can't copy and paste from folders because that's kind of a mode of operandum. Um, most everything I, you know, when you have a loss, most everything is almost copy and pasteable from room to room. Like the bulk of the items is what I find. Or um, if you're outside in the elevations and you're doing, you know, some elevations work, it's a lot of copying and pasting. So this was hard on me yesterday when I was estimating until I figured out that I could use my shortcut keys on my keyboard. But as you can see, I'm control Ving all day long and nothing's happening. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I might get with tech support later, post an update if I find what's going on. So anyhow, hopefully it works for you guys. It's shut down for me right now. And again, I just did an update right before this video. So maybe that's what's going on. All right, so let's go back to our hierarchy here. We've got claim info tab. You've got all these insured info coverage loss parameters. It's pretty typical. Notice your report section is missing or your activity reports. Um, they've moved that if you're an adjuster. Uh, and the estimate area on the ribbon, we've got sketch added here, okay? And what's weird is I cannot shut down all of my windows, um, meaning that there used to be little X's here. I have to go to options and go to the load view and use the, um, I'm sorry, full screen. Full screen will allow me. So that's, that's something I want to mention if you like a full screen sketch. I can also collapse this sidebar with these arrows so I can really get that full screen effect. So I'm excited that they actually removed the items list here in the full screen because that wasn't working for me the other day. So I can actually full screen and then if you toggle off of full screen, it brings back your search and your item list just like that. You can also use your control shift R, I believe, to bring back your search and your items. Yes, yeah, that worked. Control shift R is the shortcut to bring back your, your search and items. So now your sketch, I'm going to expand this here with those arrows. Your sketch is included in your estimate area along with your estimate items they are also in with sketch i have this exact contents tab i'm not really sure what to do with it yet i need to get with tech support and understand why i have this not sure i've used exact contents in the past but i don't currently have a subscription so i'm not sure why this is showing up maybe it's a placeholder but uh get with tech support and find out about that next you've got your photos looks pretty much like your photos before and nothing majorly upgraded here, just you've got it in a different area. It doesn't have that little tiny stack of photos now. We can see where the photos go. So I really like this. This is a great addition, spelling out where the photos go. Next is documents. Notice that we don't have reports anymore. We don't have that print up here on the top right where it used to be. We have to click on documents, which is kind of a funny way to word it in my opinion. I wish it was like print or something different. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard for me to teach this. 
but we'll get around it for sure. But to um, tell a newbie where to go to print is a little convoluted right now. So you would have to click on documents and they've expands this menu. And then you have to click on reports in order to have your print window show up. So I thought that was kind of a interesting choice for them to take away it being in the top right corner where it used to be. So click on documents, click on reports, and this it looks normally like a normal print screen here, and I can print or create a PDF, what have you, from this screen. Um, we also have this new report management section. I believe this used to be over under near claim info main tab, so that's something uh, I think used to be over there. You can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments for sure on that. I haven't used the online or 28 in quite a while. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And then the form section is is all for adjusters. So I've actually don't know where this was previously in Xactimate. I've never had to use this section. So I'm not sure where they've re you know ordered this from, but it is under documents. So we've got quite a few options here, but most contractors just stick with reports. The other is used by adjusters. Um, next is the required section. This used to be called complete. It was the complete tab. So they've moved it to required. I could click on mark complete. It'll do my uh, run my inspection wizard showing my zero quantities and everything else that I'm missing from my report. If you would like to go that far as a contractor and just use it to catch zero quantity line items, that's really the good use of the inspection wizard. If you're an adjuster, you probably have to mark all these and fix all of this stuff before you send up your report. Last, we have tools, and again, this is a bunch of other adjuster stuff, except for work orders. Work orders are interesting. You can actually create work orders for um, contractor purposes. I'm not going to go into that in this video, but I may go into it in the future because it's a lot easier to find now that they've moved it to this area. It used to be tucked under the complete tab, I believe, and I think you had to complete the estimate in order to see the work order. So this is a nice change, I think, too. I'll go through the work order in a separate video. You may have also realized or noticed that there is nowhere to save. Yes, I can save and exit in the bottom left corner, but there isn't a save button like there used to be up in the top left corner. There's a little floppy disk where we can save. So you're going to have to rely on Control S. As of right now, that was what Exactware released, saying that Control S still works. My control keys don't seem to work. Control A did, if I go back to my estimate, my control A did work here, so maybe control S is still working, but you need to be saving your estimate after every major addition to your estimate, meaning when I sketch something, I control S to save, because if it crashes, I have a restore point for it to go back and start doing its auto resave. If you don't control S whenever you're working on your estimate, it may not create that, that point where it starts the auto save, and they've told us that many times in the exact work classes that I've taken when I was a certified trainer and some of the other training I've been in on over exact work. So control S is integral since we do not have the little floppy disk icon any longer. And then of course I can just save and exit if I want to end my work on the estimate for the day. Just save and exit will take me out like it used to. So quite a lot of moving and changing of icons of moving tabs and moving the reports even. So lots of, lots of stuff going on there. It should mirror the online, or excuse me, it should mirror the mobile version. Again, I haven't used the, the, those platforms in over a year for sure. So I um, probably need to get a, get a professional subscription and get, get back to learning more about the mobile version. But this is what it's supposed to mirror. It's supposed to look like what you see on mobile. So that's why they're going in this direction and using these skins, moving things around. That's it for the changes that I see in X1. You guys probably have some other ones that you've discovered. I've only been playing around with this for about um, about five days now. So, um, you, you know, there's things that I'm still discovering about it. Like I could click to view the summary here. That's nice to see the total. It used to be in the bottom right corner. But um, you can click to view the summary there and see the total and how it breaks out. So that is including O&P. Interesting. So that's fun. I'm going to keep discovering stuff, I'm sure, as I use this more often. If you guys have any tips you'd like to share with us in the comments, I'd love to hear from you guys and see what you're discovering out there as you start using this new update. If you like this video, please be sure to press the like button below. Your likes and your subscribes are like gold here for me on YouTube. I really appreciate it and love it when you guys are liking, commenting, and sharing, as well as subscribing to this channel. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for my weekly Tuesday tech tip that I try to release every Tuesday. 
My name is Alina Wilson with Xtimate Mastery. For more information on what I do, I train contractors how to use Xactimate, how to simplify your supplement life, and do lots of other fun things. Go check out my website at www.xm8mastery.com. Hope you have a great week in your business, and I'll see you next Tuesday.